In this video, we will install the data aggregator. At this point in the installation process, we've installed the data repository and the DX NetOps portal server, and now we're going to install the data aggregator. We are on the data aggregator server now, and we have the 21.2.11 release data aggregator installation file already copied to the server, which is a compressed file which contains the actual data aggregator installation file. So just like the other installs, the first step is to extract the installer using tar xfvz. This extracts the install da.bin, which we will use to install the data aggregator. This also gives us an install dr.bin file to install the data repository, but we don't need that for this installation. The two files just happen to be bundled together. So now that the data aggregator installer is extracted, we will run install da.bin. For the Choose Locale option, we'll choose English. Next is a quick introduction about running the installer, which is good to review. We'll press Enter to continue to the next option, which is the license agreement. We'll accept the agreement. Next, the host evaluation runs, which verifies the host as the right amount of memory, cores, and the available kernel. For the Enter Username option, we'll run this as the default root user, so we can press Enter. The Configure Data Aggregator for Fault Tolerance option is next. We are performing a non-fault tolerant installation. But if we were installing with fault tolerance, we would need to install the data aggregator proxy server first before installing the two data aggregators that use the proxy. And we would need to make sure that we follow the installation documentation very carefully. In this case, we don't need a proxy, so we will press Enter to accept the default non-tolerant install. For the Choose Install folder, this is the directory where the data aggregator will be installed. We will use the default install directory, so we'll press Enter to accept the default directory, and the installer will run. For the Configure Maximum Data Aggregator Process Memory, this is the memory for the data aggregator. There is no need to change the default unless there is a specific reason, or have been instructed to do so by support. And for the Configure Maximum Active MQ Process Memory option, we can use the default memory option again. Next are the Data Repository Information options. The first option is to supply the Data Repository server IP address or hostname. We have the hostnames in a text file, so we'll copy the first Data Repository hostname from the text file and paste it here. The next option is the Data Repository server port. We can accept the default 5433 value. Next, we have the Data Repository database name. This name is defined in the DB name property in the drinstall.properties file used during the data repository installation. This is an example of where it is important to document the database name, not only for use at this point in the installation, but for troubleshooting as well. In this demo, we kept the default value, so we'll enter dr data. The database schema option is asking if we want to update the schema. Because this is a fresh install, there is no schema to update, but we can accept the default value of yes anyway. The data repository username option is asking for a username. Because this is a fresh installation of the data aggregator, the username we enter here will create the user which is used by the data aggregator to connect to the data repository. We'll enter DA user. And for the data repository user password option, we'll create a password for the user we just created. Once again, it is important to document the username and password created in these two steps and share them with anyone who will administer the DX NetOps performance management system in the event that these are needed for troubleshooting. Next is the data repository admin username option, which asks for the existing data repository admin username. This username is defined in the drinstall.properties file in the DB admin Linux user field. We kept the default value, so we'll enter dradmin. Next, we are prompted for the password for the dradmin user. This password is defined in the drinstall.properties file in the DB password field, and we changed the value of this property from the default value of DB pass to DR pass, so we'll enter DR pass. And again, even if the default values for this username and password are retained in the drinstall.properties file, it is important to document the username and password, not only for this step in the installation process, but for troubleshooting as well. 
At this point, the installer used the information we just entered to connect to the data repository to check the information is valid, and now we know that the data repository is up and running and we successfully connected to it. The reason the installer connects to the data repository is that the installer will set up the schema for the DA user we created in the earlier step, and the schema is used to set up and capture performance data. This setup is not done during the data repository install, it's done during the data aggregator install. The data repository install sets up the framework for the database, and then the data aggregator installer populates the database with the necessary tables and infrastructure. For the HTTP port option, we'll select the default port. And for the SSH port option, we'll select the default port again. The Configure DX Application Performance Management options provide the integration with APM. We are not integrating with APM in this demo, so we can choose the default option of no. Next, a pre-installation summary runs. We'll just scan through to make sure everything is in order. If we look here, we're installing the data aggregator. Here is the directory, and we're installing as root. Over here are the memory settings. These are the hosts for the data repository. And here you can see how the installer figured out that the data repository is a cluster, even though we've only put in this first host name here. This is our database name we referenced earlier, along with the DA user and DR admin user. Everything looks good, so we'll press Enter to finish the installation. The installer does not take nearly as much time as the portal install, and the installer will run through the little dashes here fairly quickly. And the installer is done. Congratulations! We have successfully installed the data aggregator. So at this point in the installation process, we have the data repository cluster that stands on its own and has been set up through the data aggregator install in terms of configuring all the internal tables. And we also have the NetOps portal server installed, but the data aggregator and the portal server are not bound to each other yet. We will do that in a later step. Next, we'll move on to installing the data collector.